We're obviously a little short on the church today. A lot of people have been sick, and uh, you know, we just ask that you hold them up in prayer. Um, we know that a lot of them probably watch it online, and uh, so I just want to say for those that couldn't make it today, we're definitely glad you're here. And uh, we excited to be a church. Amen. I mean, regardless of how many people we have today, the fact is we're all here for one purpose, and that's to serve our Lord. And uh, I know we usually try to mix some songs around for everybody's taste. And last time, last week, we did a lot of contemporary. So this week, we're going to do a lot of hymnals. And, uh, you know, hymnals for us, as we agreed upon, is just as powerful as these newer songs. And they wrote it for a meaning. They wrote it for a purpose. So a lot of these songs that you know, uh, we ask you to sing along. You can all sing it to your feet. to go to him at this time. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for again, the opportunity that we have that maybe we take for granted, Lord, so often, and that is the time that we can spend together. This dynamic of being together is so crucial and important, especially during these times, Lord, as we come into a, a, a season during which, God, it seems like all everywhere, there's this, there's that, news seems to be more uh, discouraging and encouraging, but thank you through it all. And in the midst of everything, you are there. You are the peace and the chaos, our Savior in the storm. And we just want to say thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. And uh, I want to start off by saying, kids, you're dismissed for Children's Church. Uh, and, you know, I want everyone to know, and I think we forget this every year, you can pretty well plan on that Memorial Day is going to be your lowest Sunday of the year. This is just what it is. Um, we thank God for those who are here, though, and joining us online today, which, by the way, Stacy Hogan Miller, good to see you on there. Uh, Joey Baird as well. Esther uh, there in Pennsylvania. Hogan Miller, good to see you. Uh, so amen for that. Pray for the supples. Aaron not feeling the best, so they're just taking precautions. We need to uplift them in prayer today. And everyone, please know that I'm going to try to do my best. Um, to keep updated on everything. I have to keep getting out of the Facebook app in order to see updated comments sometimes, but please be sharing your praises along with your prayer requests. Please get those things in so that by the time we come to that part of our service, we know how uh, we can be praying for you um, as well. Uh, but we wanna say we thank God for the nation that we live in. And one of the ways we do that is by remembering and reflecting on those lives that were lost uh, to help defend the freedoms that you and I get to experience today. And that is what Memorial Day is, okay? And one of the verses that I think reminds a lot of us of what it is we can most be thankful for when we think of Memorial Day is where he says, greater love has no man than this, than he that laid down his life for his friends. Ultimately, Jesus Christ did that for us as Christians, and we have so much to be thankful for in that. So I want to give God thanks, uh, ultimately, that Jesus, he laid his life down for us, but that wasn't the end. He rose again, and that's why today we'll continue talking about that resurrection hope that um, we can have. So praise be to him uh, for that today, and so much that we have to be thankful for um, and so, uh, you know, again, thank you for joining us online. Thank you for being here in person. Lord, have your way through the rest of the service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So are you here to lean on his arms? Do you praise God that you can? Let's continue in today's service. That's awesome. Lean, lean, lean. Secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, yeah. 
God's done something big in your life when you've completely leaned on his arms. When you've trusted or relied on him, you realize it's then that the rewards are gained in your life. Something good maybe has happened or taken place. I know that uh, Joey Bear just wanted to share online that she is so thankful that um, the, the pain of Med's trial is going well and that she'll be moving on to the next phase, faces another surgery to get a permanent port, I believe it is, put in. Keep praying for that, but she wants to praise God for what God is doing through that. Uh, what are some other things that we want to give God praise for today? Going on in your life, up to Him. Let's surrender those things right now to Him. I'll go uh, I'll make a quick, quick one real quick. Um, we had a uh, we had an incident that happened to me um, well, a few days ago. And uh, long story short, I had a kidney issues where it felt like I was getting pretty much stabbed with a knife on the side there. It was a severe pain. Uh, there was a tightness in that area. And we went, my wife, you know, and I, we went to, uh, we, you know, I went to see Dr. Singh, I went to the ER, and I know we're still waiting on results, but one thing I have found out is that we, my kidneys basically dropped another 2%, so we're 1% away from being on a transplant list, and we're a few percentage away from pretty much being on dialysis. But, that's the, uh, that's the bad, but let me give you the good. God is still good. You know, no matter what battles we face, no matter what road we have ahead of us, there's no need to let that bring you down because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And we're going to continue to move forward. I want to give God praise for, you know, keeping me around as long as he can. You know, to share this gospel with everybody here and online. The main thing is we always give God the glory. He's got a reason for everything. And I'm very thankful that he has given me the strength to continue to play for you guys on the stage to minister the best that I can. Um, so I give God the praise for that. Give me that strength to do that for his glory. I think what you just heard there, amen, was an awesome praise, but also I think we know how we need to continue in prayer for Brother Robert. Uh, so we want to continue to do that. Thank you for sharing that praise. Who else today would want? Peggy. All right, Peggy. Okay. Um, we just spent uh, time in Texas for our first granddaughter's, our first grandchild's wedding, and seven of us went and God provided safety, traveling there and back. And the most wonderful thing is her wedding was God-centered. She had an actual praise time in her wedding after they were married. She had an actual praise time. It was just absolutely beautiful. And I praise God for uh, both their hearts. Sounds like it. Thank you for sharing that, Peggy. Who else? I think Forrest was going to get up. Brother Forrest, man. I do. I'm a time warm bear and everything the last couple of weeks. But, uh, he never left my side. He said, you know, you trusted me and I was trusting you. You know, and I kind of walked off the path and it wasn't fun, people. It wasn't. You know, I, I got on my knees and I, I, I asked him why and it just kept happening. You know, we, we all have it in us. We all sin a little bit, a lot, whatever. But you get on your knees and you ask for forgiveness and he will. He will he forgive will. you for anything. Just ask him. And, you stay on the path, people. The path is better than walking in the briar. Yes, it is, brother. Thank you for us. Love you, man. Amen. Who else with the praise today? Yeah, Paula. Uh, I'd like to pray to God's mercy and protection. Um, Laura had a very scary, could have been life altering event that happened this past week, and God protects me. So I pray that. All right. Praise God. But thank you for sharing that, Paula. He knows what that is, the Lord. So praise Him. Who else would want today for the Lord? I'll say a quick pray, praise, you know, with Memorial Day and everything. You know, I was watching uh, a show on a history channel called Vietnam in HD, and it, it's, it's basically like stories from actual people that were there, pictures, home movies, and uh, not just the Vietnam War, but if you look back at all the wars in history, you gotta have a, a, a special appreciation for anybody that was in anything like that. I mean, just the, the life-changing events that, you know, happened during, during war, and it's sad. You watch some of this stuff and you just think to yourself, God, why, does, why did people have to fight each other, you know, and kill each other, but um, I, I just, 
thank God for those that went ahead and protect, you know, that do protect this country and, and you know, um, just uh, a special, uh, you know, sort of praise for all those that sacrificed and they gave, they gave everything, they gave their life for this country. And uh, I, I hope we don't forget that, you know, you know, we always keep them and those thoughts and those memories close, you know, that those, there's, not, nothing's free. Somebody's paid the ultimate price for it. Amen. And I don't have to know. It's not really so much. So. Anybody else with praise today? All right. Well, I just want to give a few announcements uh, and bring up, um, Men's group this Wednesday, 6 o'clock. We'll be continuing on in Soul Detox by Craig Rochelle, his video series. So we'll be here at 6 o'clock, starting session two. Christian Motorcyclist Association will be here in a couple weeks. Uh, so uh, if you want to hear about an awesome ministry in which they're not just reaching other bikers that, that are non-believers, but they reach people and help equip missionaries all over the world. With their ministry so they'll be here uh, in a couple weeks sports camp coming up uh, on June 27th through July 1st uh, and it will be again at Breitenstein Park which is right over there by Oki and Marge Kiefer uh, unless there are rain delays it will be at the YMCA Jim Sowen great man uh, said that we could have it there if there is um, a need you know a rain delay uh, I want to say I am so overwhelmed by the amount of people that have volunteered to help. Um, and I, you know, appreciate that. Praise God. Some of the things we do not know yet, though, until we know more of the exact number that will be here. Right now we're at about 20. Um, so I'm hoping in the next month that we'll, you know, I, from what I'm seeing, a lot of people could be uh, pre-enrolling soon. So uh, but keep praying about that. Also, I want to let you know there are in the back, which would be when you come in in the front, on your left hand side as you're coming in, several yard signs, uh, and especially if you live in Barberton or Norton, uh, I'm gonna encourage you to take one home uh, because it, it's helping advertise for our, the sports camp. It's very simple, the message on there, unfortunately, Wesleyan is uh, misspelled. That has partly to do with me, so, um, but it will get the idea and the advertisement out there if more people are interested. So please take one before you leave. Uh, I just want to encourage everyone just to take one if you would and get it in your yard so that we can, in this final month, uh, get the word out there. Uh, looking forward uh, to that. So um, I'm especially uh, excited tomorrow. They've asked if I would pray at the Memorial Day service. This is something I did last year, and I want to say for the city, they really have a good turnout for this. So at Lake Anna, if you are interested in coming and showing your support for those who have died to fight uh, for our nation um, and for the freedoms that we have, this Memorial Day service, I think it's top notch. They do it at 10 a.m. at Lake Anna. Uh, the monument there. Uh, so if you're interested and you have some time and you want to come out, I know that that would be encouraging uh, to those that come as well. Uh, and it'll be at 10 a.m. as I said at Lake Anna uh, tomorrow, the Memorial Day service. So wow, what a blessing. So many things to be thankful for. Um, but we want to continue today uh, and showing our uh, excitement about what God has for us and what we can look forward to, and we'll sing it together. In case if anybody's wondering what this magnificent design is here on the left, um, for those of you that were born in the 1600s, you'll know what this is. <laughs> and I don't know if any of you ever heard of a stump bill, but it takes a lot of courage to play one of these things, so I give him props for playing this thing. As you can tell, it's got, is that what this thing is? <laughs> got a, uh, Cowbell and then snare and, then, and then the rest of the stuff I think is just some uh, spare car parts. So uh, if y'all want to stand, uh, we're going to sing another fast one that everybody knows. And uh, you know, it's good when the Lord comes and we're, you know, we're going to do something. We're going to all sail up to heaven. What a rejoicing testimony that is.
extra, a little extra there, amen. Wow, beautiful, thank you guys. And so we're gonna continue. I came up prematurely. Grace greater than our sin. Growing for his Lord. Second house gets the cheese. You can all stay seated on this one if you want to. But this grace of our love. some give testimony of what that means in their life and how it comforts them to know that God, that grace, thinks again because it trumps, it triumphs over any sin that we may have committed. Yet, Lord, help us then, as your word says, to go and sin no more. But, Lord, as we understand uh, this grace, it is not to be taken lightly, and it is not a license to sin. But I do want to right now start by saying, Lord, will you forgive our nation? Because help us to remember that, Father, uh, Lord, 
by uh, our pursuing your holiness and that which is right and true and having wisdom and making decisions which are honoring to you so it is that the blessings of our nation i believe will follow and right now god i believe that there is much that we need as a nation to be repentant of to turn away from yet lord i still gotta believe because of that great grace that God, when we grieve over what we have done, especially as we consider as a nation, uh, Lord, those things that we have committed in the way of making decisions which have dishonored you, dishonored life, and the dignity of, of what is true and the sanctity of marriage, Lord, please forgive us, but help us, Lord, now to move forward and as a nation to experience a revival. We pray for a revival so that, Lord, people don't have to realize what it means to live apart from you any longer. And Lord, I pray that you will once again shower your blessings upon our nation. But God, I know and can't expect that that will take place until we return to you as a nation. Father, I also want to pray, Father, for uh, Joey Baird, who wanted to lift up to you, Father, uh, prayers for um, a change uh, that she'll be having in regards to a new pain pump, a permanent one. We pray for precision for the doctors as they perform this surgery and that it will be no less than a successful outcome. We want to continue as well to lift up Brother Robert. Man, Lord, he is so faithful to you. His family, it, it's just amazing the abundant blessings that they have been for this congregation and continue to be. And right now I wanna lift up their entire family to you as they have special need of your touch and your strength. Right now we pray God for continued guidance for the doctors and especially uh, Lord as they wait for further wisdom uh, going forward. We pray for God your leading there. We also wanna pray Father for I know Jessica's not feeling well today. Jessica Bechtel, I have lift her to you right now. Father, uh, so that she can experience your healing. Father, I pray for Aaron Supple not feeling well, family just staying home to be safe. We uh, lift them up to you as well uh, right now, Lord. Also want to continue, Lord, uh, to, to pray for um, the families of the victims in Texas. What happened this week there is horrific. It's terrible. Uh, but then again, Lord, as terrible as it is, it reminds me that God, our nation is in such a need of you. And these people are gonna need you, Lord, as they mourn over the loss of their kids, uh, the families of the teachers that were lost in this. And I pray for the family of this one who committed these acts, that Lord, they will sense your peace right now. But Father, through it all, will you help people to be drawn to you? Because that's the only way we can have that peace which transcends all understanding. So, Father, I want to continue to uplift these families to you. I also want to pray for Janice Critcher as she continues to wait on guidance from MRI results. Lord, please uh, help them to know what's going on. If it's a neurological thing, it sounds like they're sure it's not structural. Uh, Lord, uh, the pain in the feet. So we uplift that to you as well. We praise you that their daughter, Lisa, had a successful outcome after her major surgery she had recently. We continue to pray for her recovery. We want to continue to uplift Debbie Berger to you as she is begging, I'm sure, for a breakthrough. Lord, thank you for the peace she has in you and the strength she has because of you. But right now we are praying for strength for Stan going forward and for the family and that God, whether it's an ablation or whatever it's going to be, that she will have a breakthrough, God, so that this AFib will be no more. Oh Lord, uh, just again, thank you for uh, the Berger family. And Lord, uh, there are just so many things that are on our hearts right now and on our minds that I'm sure God uh, are causing us stress. I do want to continue to pray for those who don't know you. Father, that haven't realized this grace that is greater than any sin they've committed. And Lord, I know there are many right now who if they were to die, they would not be in heaven, but instead hell. And so, Father, I pray right now that no one will have to go there as a result of our lack of telling them about Jesus. Thank you that we have a good news message that we're to share. Now help us to do it. 
And Lord, I pray for the ongoing remainder of today's service, for every element that's left in it, that it will be no less than a praise offering unto you. And thank you that we have your word. We don't have to be left guessing what we're to do. We just merely need to turn to the word of God, the Bible, and it will show us through your Holy Spirit what we're to do next. Thank you for this in Jesus' name and everyone together. Amen. 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 And let's continue by the reading of God's word today. If you'll stand for the reading of the gospel, please feel free to read along with me. Um, 1 John 1 through 9, or chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Deuteronomy 33, 32, verse 3 and 4. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, worship team. Praise God. 
Heavenly Father, we do thank you for that faithfulness today. We thank you that we can even be here in your house, Lord, to worship you together, whether it's in person or online today. Thank you, God, for everything that you've blessed us with, even those things that we certainly don't deserve, which pretty well is everything. So, Lord, I thank you that we can move forward today with a message that I believe God reminds us of what ultimately we can look forward to because of the hope through your resurrection, Jesus Christ. Not only did he die, not the end of the story, but he rose on the third day. And thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for everything that you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So today again, I'm going to conclude this series, The Resurrection Hope. And I'll be talking today about what that means in regards to the hope for the future, a hope, though, that uh, ultimately will see its fruition in heaven, yet one that because if we're living for him right now, uh, we can start realizing it, the Bible says, as if through a mirror, all right? But we have so much that we can uh, rejoice in even now, thanks to the hope we have in Jesus. Fears have always been around. You know, that's one of the things that sort of led me uh, to, you know, to read this book that I read, by the way, recommend it, Hope Over Fears by Pastor Timothy Keller. Again, that man uh, was told a couple of years ago, he had stage four pancreatic cancer. He's still around, still doing God's work, doing great, praise the Lord. Uh, and just an amazing testimony through that book. But uh, there's some good scriptural insights he gives, but also ones that I know I've been reminded of or discovered through this series. And some of those things I want to bring uh, to our attention today as I talk about hope for the future. But fears, uh, they're there and they've been, I think, always there, maybe residing deep down, yet they came out in the open more when we started going through COVID. Uh, I don't even remember when it, it was first announced two and a half, three years ago. Okay, it just seems like a blur anymore. And I think it brought things out in the open even more so. People started uh, experiencing anxieties that they didn't know they would ever have. Um, and so we need to be mindful of the fact that while this is a very serious issue, that is in the way of mental illness. It's out there, okay, I'm one that's not ashamed or afraid to admit. Um, I've struggled with it from time to time, but I give praise to God today that I can tell you he's helping me to overcome it. It's just a very real deal. And I think for some people, uh, it's one they're not willing to talk about. Yet, if we're transparent before God, he wants us to get over it with his help and in the dynamic of being with other believers. We have nothing to be ashamed about. The only thing we have to be ashamed about, if we're one that struggles with it, is if we're not seeking help from God to get through it and other believers. So I want to remind you today, though, that I hope through this series you uh, take into account and reconsider the fact that while fears are real, Hope sounds a louder trumpet. And further, please don't let the present crises in our world direct how you feel about hope, whether that's the Ukraine-Russia conflict, okay, whether uh, that's the reality that sin seems to be being endorsed more than ever, or whether that's the idea that it seems like the news media can't let COVID go, and they're always putting a new spin on everything. And now the latest, you know, and you probably see this, there's BA.2.2.21, whatever, you know, is out there. It may or may not be coming. And so what's Dr. Fossey say? Okay, I'm not trying to get political. I'm just saying we cannot let the news media or any of that other riffraff that's out there that's trying to cause us discouragement sound the louder trumpet than what it is we have in reality through the hope of Jesus Christ. And that's why I hope you're going to be extra encouraged today. Because these times that we're going through, it won't continue as it is, okay? The COVID fears, these other things, they will dissipate. But there will be new crises if the Lord allows for the world to continue in the future. That is a promise. Because I like in the words of Pastor Keller what he said, Globalization and technology only increase the danger of these epidemics. 
such as COVID, and years from now, when the fears of this time will have likely receded, there will be other times of crises ahead. Still, the question must be asked, while no one can live without hope, how do we get it? And corporately speaking, how does a society, a nation, live without hope for its future? It just can't. So would you consider with me the following uh, with me as we look at the two things together I want us to cherish uh, and look at more closely. Number one, understand what I'm calling the hopeless reality. Okay, that doesn't mean settle for hopelessness. No, it's just what's out there. People in our culture seem to be extra hopeless these days. They're not recognizing the hope that we have. Many of us in here, or if you're joining us online, you have hope if you know Jesus, but not everybody knows that hope. In fact, if you read the Bible, I believe correctly, it says to us that many more don't know the hope that we have as Christians. But we need to understand the hopeless reality of them. And then know the future with hope. All right? Know that future. If all I talked about was the hopeless reality that a lot of people have found, and then we didn't look at the solution, then I'm a part of the problem. And you know what they say about that? If you're not a part of the problem, okay? Or I mean, if you're not a, pro a part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So I want to be part of the solution today, and we'll talk about that through the point, know the future with hope. But first then, understand the hopeless reality. The world's experiences prove this. For example, and as some scholars will remind you, in case you've forgotten, the period from 1900 to 1950 saw not only two world wars, but a worldwide flu pandemic and the Great Depression. These were things that the progress of human reason and advancing Western civilization were supposed to stop, but they did not. In fact, you talk to a lot of people, at least maybe even just a few years ago, they're like, oh, as we get more technology, as science finds out more, we'll have cures for cancer, we'll be able to uh, stop diseases from happening. And I'm not saying praise God for science and advanced medicine and these things, but what we found is, well, advancing science and advancing technology haven't created less problems. Unfortunately, they've created more. And ultimately, where our hope has to be is in Jesus. All right? We have to ultimately rely on him and be thankful for the grace he shows us. Realizing then, again, these crises, despite what some in science thought would never have happened, caused some to turn to feeling hopeless in what they put their stock in. And ultimately, I don't want to put down scientists and science, especially during this recent pandemic, okay? Thank God for some wisdom that they shared. But I think if we're honest, it was a guessing game for everyone. Okay, whether it was Dr. Fossey or some other person gets out there and they're like, well, so-and-so says this will happen. And then a week later, oh, change their mind. No, we were wrong. Okay, what this shows is that ultimately science is not the savior. God is. Only God knows everything. Only God knows all. And what is the way of curing human ills? It's Jesus. Ultimately, our reliance has to be put in him. Still, some have put their trust in technology as a means to reviving hope. Instead of seeking the truth, take into account a woman by the name of Margaret O'Mara, who wrote in the New York Times once of what she called the Church of Techno-Optimism. By that, she said she believed that technology and technologists, as they have been called, are building the future. Place a computer, she said, on every desk and enable network communication and you can remedy every societal failure and injustice. Does that happen? No. Okay. The problem with a so-called, quote, progressive notion is that it doesn't work. It just does not work. What instead has occurred is that many of the world's current problems are actually caused by technological advancement. Case in point, and in the words of Pastor Keller, who has researched this issue, one of those things is climate change. 
Another is the prospect that fast-moving, destructive pandemics are more likely because of the globalization of our economy through technology. In fact, ask yourself this, what if in the next pandemic, and other ones likely to come, the fatality rate is 10% rather than the far lower rate of COVID-19. Because if you think Corona is the last pandemic, if God allows this world to spend very much longer, it will not be. It's just inevitable. But we need to plan on it, yet prosper through the hope we can have in Jesus. All this to say, this is what I call a hopeless reality. And it's witnessed through culture. Some examples include maybe a recent movie you watch, especially those in the sci-fi genre. Have you noticed if you go to one of your apps on your Roku TV or wherever it is that you're going to find yourself, that you can find a lot of apocalyptic movies? I won't lie, Chris, and I like those kinds of things. But if you look at them, all right, what you find is that they don't offer a solution. It's the end of the world, and it's the end of the world. There's nothing else. It's ultimate oblivion for everyone. Uh, you turn to some movies, and there's no positive scenario for the future. And it's been found after much research that younger adults are even far less likely to marry or have children or even vote. And if you find such indicators to be true, which they are, it also points to the fact that many of them feel hopeless. All studies, in fact, that the members of Generation Z indicate that they are much more pessimistic about the future and about themselves than older generations. In fact, what we also need to be facing is that uh, there is an epidemic right now and it's called suicide. And since Corona began to take place, then there was a much higher drug use of opiates and all of them across the board and a much higher suicide rate. People are feeling hopeless and they don't have to, but this is the reality. Therefore, consider this, that a hope, okay, a hope in modern day progressivism is limited. It's limited and it is not lasting. The Bible says, in fact, that the nature of all man is sin. Progressivism says, now I'm not talking politically whenever I use that term progressivism. You know, we talk about progressives and the right wing, left wing. I'm not getting at that, okay? Uh, you know, I'm not stupid. I'm not trying to lose our tax exempt status, church, okay? I'm just stating here when I say progressivism, okay, what I'm talking about is that progressivism is reliant on the fact that if people were perfect, which we know they're not, okay, because the nature of all man is sin, if people are perfect, then you can expect things are going to get better in times ahead. But they're not. Okay, people aren't perfect. I'm not saying things can't get better for a season, but ultimately the truth is this. When Adam and Eve sinned, okay, bad things began to happen. Why do good people suffer through bad things? Again, I brought this up recently. Because of the original sin. You know, it's, it's not something we don't have an answer for. When people say, why does God, a loving God, God doesn't want it to happen for anyone, in anyone's life, bad things. But as a result of what Adam and Eve did, bad things happened. So we must face the truth today that because of that fact, things are not always going to get better. In fact, we are spinning towards a time in which ultimately the world as we know it will cease, but it will lay uh, again for a better path for eternity with God that we have to look forward to. So the secular hope is only for a progress that is very temporary. In fact, many who rely on things always getting better without knowing Jesus ultimately believe what lays before all of us is oblivion. When you die, you go six feet under, that's it. But we know that's not true because we have a real hope thanks to what Jesus did, not just on the cross, but because he died and became sin for us, taking on all of our sins. But then because he rose on the third day, 
we have a hope and can know the future with hope. All right. This hopeless reality experienced by so many can be changed around to one with much reason for hope. But ultimately, it takes looking to a better future that for now requires hope. Capital H. Because it's not here yet. All right. The hope that I'm referring to is what you read about in Revelation and you get the idea of in other parts of the scripture that eventually the world as we know it right now, this planet Earth will be restored and made new. OK, and there will be a time in which we dwell with God, but a time that will lead into forever. All right. And further, this hope I'm speaking about takes believing that God is the way to realizing his declared promises. So I love that song, leaning on the everlasting arms and reminding us that God's promises. OK, some of them have already taken place, but ultimately they will not see fruition until this hope is completely realized. And needless to say, it is a hope in a future to come for Christians, and it helps us live with better days now. What do I mean when I say that? What I mean is that when you live as a believer in Jesus, you can realize better things in this earth right now because you have the right perspective and because your trust is being expressed in God. And it says that when you cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you, you can expect a peace that transcends all understanding. And when you trust, okay, in the Lord with all your ways, it says he's going to make your paths straight. And the Bible also says when you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, that all of these things will be added unto you as well. I don't know for sure what all of those things are for you, but I can tell you, you can start realizing them right now when you rely on him and his promises. In fact, this hope we have, thanks to Jesus's resurrection, transcends but includes what we call history, which is really his story, and what we know is science. Taking that into account, factual history, when looked at in the right way, is really all about his story, isn't it? And it's because of understanding that Jesus rose from the dead. All right, we can have a highly reasonable hope that there is a God who's going to renew this world just as he already does in your individual lives. And can I explain to you what that would be like? No, I can't. I like the verse in the Bible. My dad has it on a picture in his home. And it says, the eye hath not seen nor ear heard the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So I can tell you what is awaiting is far greater than I can explain to you. For me to pretend to be able to would be inadequate. So this hope uh, for renewal is distinctly promised to the Christian. In fact, as Keller put it, no other faith says that not only will we be resurrected as individuals, but that the material world will be renewed as well. Now, when I say material world, okay, I'm not talking about what Madonna sung about. We are living in the material world. I'm a material girl. What I'm talking about is that in a new way, in a way we can't understand, God speaks of the new heaven and the new earth. And so what this means is that whether human beings believe it or not, society is destined not for ultimate oblivion, end of story, for the follower of Christ, there is the promise of perfect prosperity, love, justice, and peace. <laughs> a world in which no longer will we be killing our unborn children, or will, be, or will there be people endorsing sin in any respect. And while uh, there are certain things that we can only find and will realize when we see God face to face for an eternity, there are things that we can start realizing right now as a follower of Jesus. And regarding this future hope once stated, that the resurrection of Christ promises us not merely some future consolation prize for the life to come or the life we lost, but also restoration of the life we lost and infinitely more. 
Knowing the future life God gives those who have placed their trust in his son Jesus causes the Christian to have a correct understanding of life right now and how not to put hope in the wrong direction. For example, it is wrong to base a society on the assumption that every generation is going to experience more prosperity. In fact, I believe by giving that false assumption, we are realizing a hopeless reality today of many people who are instead taking uh, bad decisions and making them even worse by ending their life, by going in intense depression and not seeking the true hope that we have in Jesus. And so people are realizing, well, what my granddad or great-granddad always said isn't true because hope was always put in the wrong direction. It was put in people instead of God. So my prayer today is this, that you have found this series of messages, which I call Resurrection Hope, to be both encouraging to help you live your life now as a better follower of Jesus but also, you have hope because of the eternal hope you have because Jesus Christ did rise from the dead. This requires that your ultimate hope not be put in a human being, all right, but God. According to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, this means hope for you becomes expressed confidence, certainty, and full assurance. As Keller wrote of it, if I believe in the resurrection of Jesus, that confirms that there is a God who is both good and a God who is powerful, who brings light out of darkness and who is patiently working out a plan for his glory. Our good and the good of the world are, as Keller put it, and I like this very clear illustration, a person who gets a diagnosis of cancer will rightly put his relative hope in doctors and medical treatment. And there's nothing wrong with that. But his main dependence must be in God. If he puts his heart's main hope in medicine, then an unfavorable report will be devastating. But if his heart's main hope is in the Lord, he will be like a mountain that cannot be shaken or moved. And Isaiah 40, 31 says that those who hope in the Lord are not anxiously holding out, but always renewing their strength and even soaring with wings like eagles. This hope we have is secure and sound thanks to and only thanks to the fact that Jesus died and rose again. And to that hope, I feel like our only proclamation today can be, thank you, Lord, thank you. Could you agree and say thank you, God? Thank you to him today for something we don't deserve, but praise you, Lord, for giving it to us. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we have hope beyond today. And whether we live or see another day on this side of eternity, there is a hope that says to us, you have a future. And you can have hope in that future because you know Jesus. But God, whether someone online or here in person, God is saying today, I don't have that hope. Help them to know that before they leave this place, they can that God ultimately all they have to do because Jesus died and rose again is say, I want Jesus in my life. And Jesus, will you forgive me of every wrong thing I've done? Will you, God, remove this feeling I have? God, remind me that your grace is greater than all my sin and that God, I can have a better tomorrow by a decision I make today. And so, Father, I pray what that decision will be is that we want your forgiveness and that, God, we want you to remove the impurity from our life so that we can begin living holy and true unto you. Because, God, that's ultimately what your word says is what we're relying upon, that without the remission of sins, there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, rather, there is no forgiveness of sins. So thank you that you gave your life and you were willing to bleed for us and then rise again so that we have hope for the future. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So next week, I want to invite you back. I'm going to take a little bit of a moment, a breather, you might say. And I'm going to talk about, okay, in between of the next series that I'll have. Uh, you know, we're going through all these things, but what about prayer? 
Okay, our Christian life in general, what about prayer? Maybe you're facing a, a struggle, whether it's mentally, whether it's physically, whether it's emotionally or spiritually. What about prayer? So we'll talk about that next week. And then in the following week, Christian Motorcyclists Association will be here. But you know what? Even before then, live faithfully for him today because great is the faithfulness of God, right? Oh God, our Father, great is your faithfulness. Proclaim that through your life today. God bless you.